Anyway, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Can you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I know. Blah, blah, blah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yes, Bob Govin has a conflict, so you have me. Uh, first up on the agenda, Susan Gaducci Historical Commission. Susan, welcome. Thank you. Introduce yourself and. Sure. Um, Sue Gaducci Historical Commission. Um, as you all know, I'm here tonight because we have been trying to seek alternatives to the demolition of the old police station. Um, I know that this is a extremely controversial topic. Um, I don't particularly see it that way. Uh, it makes sense, um, it financial or fiscal sense to take this town asset and see if it can be um, there can it can be repurposed. Um, we have gone. I have met with. Well, I shouldn't say I. We have met with the met with a member of the planning board. We met um, Tuesday night with the community preservation committee, from whom we have gotten a letter of support um, as far as requesting uh, the select board to stay the demolition until we can do some further exploration or investigation for the repurposing of this building. I'm not sure you are aware. Um, it's been estimated that the value of this building as a town asset is in the realm of between a million and a million and a half. Um, we have been getting uh, consultations pro bono from affordable housing experts and they are of the belief that this building, once uh, the plumbing and uh, heating and ventilation systems are removed, which they would have to be if this building were to be reused for, say, for example, housing, um, that would take care of the problem as far as the Legionella bacteria is concerned. Um, and if anybody has any additional questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Have you pursued any funding sources for any of these projects? We have not. In fact, the, on, at Monday night's meeting of the select board, um, Chair Tattlebaum uh, made a suggestion that we might want to consider selling the building and having a developer assume the risk and the responsibility for creating um, some housing there, mm -hmm. preferably affordable, yes. I, I personally am not an advocate of selling town assets because we don't own a lot of land. I, and I understand that, but we feel that this building is, the, it, it's, to, to reuse it is better than de demolishing it and creating a parking lot. Um, and we need affordable housing. We are below the 10%. It's been stated that we need a total of 183 units to make that, that 10%. And as it stands now, as I'm not sure the numbers are accurate, but we, we're gonna have 144 units up on Reed Road. So that leaves a deficit, which in this case it would fill, or not quite, because there, I think, Someone said that we could only get roughly between 10 and 12 apartments in that building, but just so that you're aware, they've already taken on a project of similar size um, at Holy, Holy Family High School in New Bedford. I have a couple of questions. So the building's been vacant since 2014. Why now? Well, we have obviously COVID created an issue. Um, when they first started the, that whole 
um, it, when they went into the building because of the Legionella, we didn't have the technology to remediate. Um, at the time, that all could have been remediated through like the technology that's available now. We didn't have it in 2015. It's some type of uh, technical chemical process, if you will, the best that I can explain it. I'm not a science person, but now they've developed that technology, but because it's stood for so long at this point, it doesn't, and because the plumbing is so, um, it, it's, it's not usable the way it is because of all those dead ends that you keep hearing about, the plumbing would have to be stripped out anyway. So, and you asked why it's taken this long, because we've always been under the impression, as was I, and I'll admit it, that I voted for the demolition of the building, but that's, be that's before I actually started looking at it, which would have been the responsibility of the town to start looking to see if it could be repurposed and what the cost would be and if it could be remediated. But it wasn't until we got this, like you're saying, this far down the line now, and people are still trying to, they're, they're using fear tactics to say that the building, building needs to be demolished, which it does not. Didn't we go through a process back when the building was closed to bid it out to somebody to see if somebody was interested in purchasing it or, or reuse before it was determined to be something that needed to be knocked down? In 2015, they did two assessments. Mm -hmm. One of a cost to renovate the existing building and correct the conditions with the same floor plan. That was going to be $5.6 million. Mm -hmm. The other scheme was to renovate the existing building, correct all the conditions with a new floor plan for housing. That was going to be $8 million. That was rejected at town meeting in 2016, or at, at the ballot, I think, at the April election. That okay. was done in 2015. Okay, I thought I remembered something about that. <clears throat> Actually, I'm gonna, there were, three, there were three schemes when it was still the police station, A, B, and a C. The, the, the B scheme, which everything would have to be completely renovated, it was to, be, to reuse it as the police station. That was before they went to the Gidley site. And that, would, that scheme was approved by the committee that was looking at it. So I'm not sure what feasibility study I'm looking at, but there seems to be a difference of opinion or how, it was, how I read it. I do have a question, if I may. Uh, I'm liaison to the Council on Aging. I know they were speaking of, uh, with concern to that building about perhaps making that into a shelter in case there was any storms or anything that they could, you know, lodge, you know, senior citizens that wouldn't have the capability of finding shelter. I don't know if that would be put into the mix too as far as repurposing goes. I don't know how far that conversation went with anybody. I haven't heard anything about it since, but that was last spring they talked about that. So I don't know if they raised approached you on that or anybody or anything. They they have not. I know that typically the senior center gets used for emergency housing purposes. Yeah, that's, that would not be enough in case it was a dire emergency. That's yep. why they're looking yep. at an alternative. I can tell you, Bill, so uh, for an emergency shelter, they generally desire large open spaces, not uh, floors and not rooms. Not confined. But that's one thing when we talk about the recreation center proposal. I mean, it's a recreation center, but that mm -hmm. one of those uses yes. would be an emergency shelter yes. for the community. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so how, what do you um, what do you see happening in terms of all right so we're sitting here we're talking about this ideally what would you like to have happen next and the next step after that and the next step after that and then how long would it take to actually complete roughly uh, what it is you want to do with it well as the demolition delay stands now we only have until mid January so we would like to extend the the delay period and we would like to, we would need at least an additional six months to a year to look into um, alternatives and to see if there's an appetite for selling that building for affordable housing. So that, we, in other words, if a developer were to come forward and be able to pay, just, I'm just gonna throw a figure out, $500,000 for the, for the building, that would, 
we were going to spend $500,000 to demolish the building. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a, it's a, it's a wash, plus we would be able to, to um, complete or at least add to our affordable housing stock. And have you explained that order of steps to the select board? <laughs> You might want to watch the Monday <laughs> oh, I'm meeting. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't I'm watch not, it. I'm, not, I'm not being yeah, fresh. Just, that no, no, it's fine. She was there. Oh, okay. So I did, yeah, I did watch. One. I did watch the select board meeting, and I think one of the concerns I have, Sue, is that what you're talking about, and the other people who are working with you are talking about, is theoretical. It's all ideas that you have, which are good ideas. We do need more housing. There's no question about it. The actual work that's done, been done to assess and determine what it would cost. You know, has a developer come in or has a real estate person come in and done an actual assessment? I heard the gentleman speak at the select board meeting and he had an idea about what it would be worth, but do we have anything firm that says that's actual? Well, we actually, I mean, you have to understand, I mean, this is like most other volunteer groups in town that we're doing all this legwork and we're trying to keep up with it in and thinking that we're doing the best thing for the town, and we can't take any of these steps or further steps until we're sure that somebody's not gonna show up with a wrecking ball. So it sounds to me like you don't trust the process that was in place. It sounds no. to me. <laughs> so and that's, that's easy. easy. Right. <laughs> and so that's, yeah. yeah. So two things, probably more, but two things happened that caught my attention at the select board meeting. One was the split vote on the feasibility study. So where would that stand now that it's tied, basically? Well, that's a pretty interesting topic because, as you know, CPC gave us, or well, was willing to give us $10,000 of their administrative funds to do an environmental assessment and a structural assessment. We, that was denied by the select board hmm. because we had to go to them to, and I'm not sure why, I don't know whether it's because it was out of the cycle of the applications or why it required a vote of the select board, but they denied it and said that they wanted to have a study done that was not called a feasibility study. So, it, and when asked at the select board meeting what the cost might be, there was a quote of $50,000. We were, we had a historical commission, a former historical commission member who works in that field say that the environmental assessment cost alone would run from 1800 to 3200. And select board had a quote of 50,000. When asked this last select board meeting about the process, because they were supposed to share information with us from November, in other words, what they were looking for in terms of the scope of work, no one shared anything with us. We, were, we wanted to collaborate with select board on working through this issue. Nothing was shared at the select board meeting on Monday we were told that a firm, in, a, an architectural firm in Rhode Island by the name of Brewster Thornton had quoted a price of 46,000, mm -hmm. which is a far cry from what we were led to believe. And, but yet, we were, we were hoping to do those two studies for under or around 10,000. Mm -hmm. So, I guess I'm unaware, and maybe this is my own ignorance, that the select board can overrule what CPC asked for? Uh, CPC can fund uh, whatever, whatever they like, as long as it suits, it's, it falls in line with the requirements of the state law, that C, what CPC can fund. Did it break state, state law, what they well, were asking I mean, for? A couple of things here. So we were asked by the select board to produce a proposal for a three or four topics. And they were clear at that meeting that they wanted a proposal for the cleaning of the building, the use of the building, and assessment of the structural integrity of the building. That was provided in writing. We have not received anything else in writing from anybody else with any other proposals that are formal proposals. So the select board at the time 
they said, we want this proposal, we want it prepared, and we want to present it at a future meeting. The select board asked for that. They didn't ask to collaborate, they didn't ask anything. That's what they wanted was the proposal for the use of the building. We provided that proposal in writing with Brewster Thornton providing that. So, okay. CPC, you, we don't have any, you know, they can propose whatever they would like, but we can't, you know, if, they fund no, what they I'm want to No, I'm just trying to follow the logic that I thought town meeting voted on things that got put forward by CPC. CPC would put that forward and it would be on the town meeting warrant to fund. Okay, interesting. If um, you, I'm sorry, no, if you ahead. listened to the meeting that we were at in November with the select board, my very last question to the chair of the select board was, will you keep us in the loop? And the answer was yes. That's not keeping us in the loop. That's that's jumping to a whole nother step that we weren't involved with. I understand that, but as you know, we can't solve that. No, I, no, <laughs> it no. It's just a matter no, of No, but I'm just clarifying, clar I'm just clarifying oh. sure. Um, the one other thing that I was curious about is there was a question about who is specifically responsible for that building that, ca that came up on uh, Monday night, whether it was the, went, reverted back to the town or was it historic? That was a question about something that was submitted being a form and the time, time stamp on it. That was if we had jurisdiction Correct. over the building. Has, has that been determined? I, know. I think you're, uh, maybe you might be misunderstanding that. So uh, the Historic Commission determines if the building is historic and they have criteria for that. They do not have right, authority over the building. The select board has authority through town meeting over the use of the building and the land. But Anthony stood up, the, our town council stood up and, and basically said that it was not their jurisdiction because it, it of not something their, about a form that was submitted. It is not their jurisdiction to dictate the use of the building. Their jurisdiction is to dictate or to determine if the building is historically significant. Okay. That is it. So we've determined that it's historically significant. Is that correct? I mean, that's something that's going to come up at the next meeting. So, so I, that has not been decided. Well. You know, I won't get into the details. No, of that. I was just trying to understand what I heard on Monday night. Yeah, I guess so, I misunderstood. But it's outside the scope of the actual use of the building. That mm -hmm. needs to be determined by the select board, regardless of this, the process yeah. that you're referring to. Does anybody else have any questions for? Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I would like to know what what do you want? What would you like the town to do as a result of where you stand want, right now? For housing. What specific steps? Would you like the town to do? We need to delay the demolition. We need to take the time to have a proper environmental and structural assessment. And if we have, and, and if those look, if those, if those reports look good, then we'll move on to the next step of bringing in a developer to, to see if, if it's worth it for someone to utilize that building for, for example, housing. Have, have you made those steps uh, in writing known to the select board with due dates re and responsibilities of who's going to do the work and what it's going to cost? We can't set dates or come to any conclusions if they're not willing to cooperate. I thought, well, I mean, I, I it's think sort of... I, I, my impression, I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't see the hearing or listen to the hearing. But I would think if you could write down exactly what you wanted from them in writing and then put some due dates and responsibilities on it. So to say it in a public meeting you don't think is adequate, we need to put it in writing so that- I would think so, and sources of funds and- But that's where the developer comes in. The developers have, they know where the grant, the grant, the grant funding is for affordable housing, for example. We can- our goal was to start lining these consultants up when we got the package that Sean was asked to put together for that, for that meeting. And we received no package. When we got to the select board meeting on Monday, we were expecting to see what was gonna be the scope of work and we were told that the assistant town administrator had already contacted the firm in Rhode Island. So unfortunately, there's a lot going on here that is way beyond our scope here. But John, I know you had a question. So, you know, what I've followed along, 
talking to individuals and what I've seen in the in the papers is that the historic commission has already identified this that they they automatically the building because of our existing bylaws if it's older than 75 years it goes before the historic commission they determine if they can put a stay on it now to stop a uh, six months uh, demolition they have done that and since then they've certainly made it known that they think the building should be saved period I don't think you know now I've heard suggestions from Sue and others you know maybe we should look at housing and you know I don't think it's up to them to determine that. I mean, they're asking for monies to do an assessment of the building mm -hmm. um, and what, it's, what possible repurposing could take there. And I can envision a lot of things that could sure. take place yeah. with there, for, even including municipal uses. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it doesn't have to be housing. It, you know, it can be a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, so... Having said that, and I sit on the CPC, you know, Sue came before us the other night, and, um, you know, I wish we had this discussion, you know, before we voted $500,000 to take down uh, the building. Um, and I wasn't in favor of doing that. I, I, I think the town should never sell an asset. We should always keep an asset. Uh, mm -hmm. The building yeah, <coughs> needed work, but if we can find monies to stabilize the building, and hold on to it until mm -hmm. we can find a repurpose. I think we should do that. Um, I've seen, you know, some recent examples. A number of years ago, the town, and that was the current administration and the select board at the time, decided they wanted to sell Smithneck School and uh, Southwood Library. Let's unload that. We don't need those buildings. Blah blah blah. It's got us this money. Town meeting said no. Save those buildings. Even though we didn't have anybody else. I mean, the select board tried, or administrator, who's interested, nobody was interested. Uh, those buildings are now being repurposed, one by the park department and the rec department, and we've got this grassroots efforts that came out of nowhere mm -hmm. that has taken over the Southworth uh, uh, Library. Volunteers with no experience in saving buildings. And look, we've got this beautiful historic building that's being preserved. Why not? This is simple. They're asking for a simple state, back off, let's do an assessment, see if we can do a repurpose. I don't think that's a lot to ask. It's not gonna cost us a lot of money. Um, and my opinion, even if there's nothing, if we can just hold on to that, because I've seen it before, I would hate the wrecking ball shows up there and three years down the road, we've got a town department coming to us and say, we need $12 million to build a building, our needs don't fit what we got now. What a shame. I that we just let a building go because we didn't have, you know, uh, the, the foresight that this would ever come up. That scares me, that we let an asset go and somebody comes out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. So if we can't find anything, let's just stabilize it if it's worth. You know, I've heard a lot of <clears throat> stories about, well, the Legion is, the mold, there's cracks in the foundation. An assessment would determine, you know, there's not, yeah. uh, there's an engineering solution to every problem when it comes to a structure. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's just how much it's going to cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and is it worth it, the cost to mm -hmm. fix the foundation, fix it? And that's what this assessment will do. Mm -hmm. to say, hey, you got a building that's worth a million dollars. If you fix it up, it's $5 million fixed, but it's going to cost you $8 million to fix it up. Well, it's a no-brainer. Let's tear it down. But yeah. if it's the other way around, yeah. maybe we should hold on to it. So to, you know, the CPC voted to just simply send a letter that we're in favor of holding off and let's do an assessment, see if there's, um, the building can be repurposed. And, you know, we didn't say it's got to be housing, it's got to be affordable, it's got to be just do a study to see if the building's worth and saving. I, was that in November? I'm excuse me? Was that in November? That, that was just uh, Monday, uh, oh, Tuesday that, night this week. Oh, so it was after the select board discussion? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So, I, so I have a question. Now. Okay, one more question. All right, very quickly. Since we have a period in front of us, what would you like us to do for you? Because we're really an advisory board. You know, we can suggest, I got to piggyback on what John said, I think, and what you folks are alluding to, get some type of feasibility justification, call what you want. Sometimes it's better to tear something down completely and start all over, because you know, when you start unearthing things, you know, you find more Bill, they're looking for a letter of support from us to simply say to the select board, you know, because we can't determine what 
the building should be in. You know, if, if all what they this, want, I don't see any problem with that at all. But as long as we right, and I think that's all. The, I, I think that's all Sue's looking for is, is a letter as opposed to the select one saying, "Hey, hold off a minute. Let's let's do a study," and I'm in favor of that. So be a general letter from us, not with any dollar figures or anything, saying let's do a feasibility study. And right, Sue has day. thrown out some preliminary numbers, and I don't think they're absorbent. And and you know that's going to be fine too. Well, as but long as she can back up those numbers, yeah, I don't want to just yeah. give a blank statement. Don't just yeah, no, I, I I agree. But again, you're dealing with uh, a grassroots volunteer effort, you know, right. that is looking for help from the town, right. and apparently where right. they're not getting much cooperation with, they've yeah. got some uh, yeah. more capability to do some heavy lifting. Sure. You know? um, hey, if it's feasible, I to keep the building the way it is. But you know, that has to be determined and. If all they need is some, a lot of support, then fine, throw some numbers in there. and Absolutely, and you can even include not to exceed $46,000. Yeah, some right. parameters, that, because that I just don't like throwing from a letter night. out there with right. nothing on it. It should you know? definitely have the dollars yeah. attached to it. have dollars. If it's coming from us, it's going to have dollars. <laughs> well, right? Otherwise. Because we are the finance committee. I'll make a motion we send a letter of support to the select board, ask them that they hold off on demolition, and that the finance committee would um, support a feasibility stop, a study uh, that does not exceed $46,000. And I'll second that. Seconded by Bill Bowles. The motion was by John Souza. I say that for the minutes. Yes. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Terry, are No. Terry, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Appreciate your efforts. Thanks. I'm <laughs> Diane, I know you're unstoppable. <laughs> anyway. John, will you be writing that letter? I can. That was going through you, my mind. You, you've seen an example of my writing capabilities. Are you sure you want me writing that letter? I will take a stab at it. You, know, but. you can start, with, you you can start with the framework. I think you could just uh, add to it. Whatever you listen to when you hear the recording of this, write, just write what you said. Right. Well, well, call it a day. Well, first of all, John has participated in meetings that discuss this, and there's several recordings of meetings where you can <laughs> this particular meeting, bury I, yourself I under information about yeah. this. Yeah. Sean and Gary, I don't know if you have this information off the top of your head, but there was the police station feasibility study was done by Lieb Associates. Do you have any idea what it costs to do that feasibility study? Uh, in 2015? Uh, I don't know. I could, I could look. 10000 I'm not sure. I, 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 yeah. I don't even want to venture to throw out a number, but we can I certainly find it, the okay. information. It was done in 2015? Uh, well, yes. It's Janine, just, I, I get a lot on my plate personally. So don't expect anything, uh, you know, in the next few days. I'll be by my uh, email at around 8. What's that? I'll, I'll be looking at my email around 8 p.m. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Life's too busy at the moment for me, but I will. No, no, I understand. Uh, I understand. I don't think they're having another meeting, and, Sean, you would know best. It doesn't go before the select board until, is it January 8th? They don't meet again until the 8th, yes. Okay, so we have a little time <laughs> in regards to that. All right. Fiscal year 25 budget message and form. So at the last meeting, <clears throat> the um, committee, we discussed the preliminary calendar of um, uh, the budget for 20, fiscal 25. And um, uh, Brian had given us some um, uh, a form that wanted, he wanted presented to the departments. We had a department head meeting um, a week ago, so ago we briefed the department heads that uh, we would be sending this form along with the budget memo. Uh, I think what we're waiting for right now is guidance from the January 8th meeting uh, to determine whether or not what we what we want to do with the budget for fiscal 25. My office downstairs, along with the assistant uh, treasurer, has started the preliminary budget and putting that together. We've gotten the salaries together. We've gotten um, the majority of the assessments we know and what those increases will be for FY25. So we're starting to build a base budget. And what I envision is that we start to, to meet with the budget, with the departments. Uh, and the model that we used last year was I met with the smaller departments 
and uh, also told them that if they needed to meet with the finance committee, they could. I know there's a couple of requests that I've gotten from departments that want to meet with, with the committee. So we're not shunning them away from meeting with, with the committee, but the majority of them will come back to me, and then I can present that to the, to the, um, the full committee once we start talking about the budgets. So um, because the focus, I believe, this year will still be the schools and the larger departments, DPW, police, uh, and so on. So I think that going in, going into the into the uh, January eighth meeting, we're not going to wait. We're, we're already, like, as I mentioned, we're already developing the budgets downstairs. So uh, also capital, I envision that we start meeting with them in January uh, and having a discussion with the committee, and then bring in the departments. I know DPW has done some preliminary work for the cap with their capital, so we'd like to meet with them. Probably one of the first departments we meet with, um, but uh, we can go over the the form because I guess I, we wanted to have some clarification if there's any tweaks or changes we need to have uh, done before we submit that. Now a lot of the, inf some of the information that we have in here, if you look at the budget memo that we send out, this, this puts it's it in a different, yeah. it, it puts it in a different format and um, it might be different from what the, dep the p departments may see this as a, as a different uh, uh, methodology of putting the budget together and the, me the data that's needed. but. I think they're already doing that once they put the, what, just developing their budget and looking at the budget memo, they're getting the same information, but. Um, so that's a question. Stand, so standardized this. historically they've presented a majority of this information in the format they have. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're asking for the same information in a different format, but you know, I guess, do you really need it in this yes. format? Yes, because what I find is we tend to look at line items uh, one, year to the, uh, one year to the next. Um, and they, we tend to concentrate on the numbers, and it's really difficult to get a handle on. Uh, I th just looking at the numbers are, are easy, but to get a handle on uh, what worked, what didn't work, who's responsible for making it work. And it's not from a point of view of reducing budgets. It's from a point of view of finding out what's really benefiting the town on a particular uh, item, and then to say, are you being funded enough? or no, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I think it, it's good information. I, I guess what I'm questioning is sometimes the information is presented or it's exported from Munis, and you're getting it in the Munis format. It's the same information. Now, do you, if you want departments I, to just transpose that information no, just to I, reformat I, well, I, it, or I, I need words and I need people to talk about the the words. Yeah, that, that's that's fine. Okay, I, I just didn't know if you wanted them to just redo the way they no, have no. presented I want, the budget. I want I want it literally to look like this. I mean, come in and just give me two or three or four yeah, that's, different that's different uh, data points about each uh, initiative that supports a goal, and tell me are you funded enough? Are you not funded enough? If you're not funded enough, why? Uh, and what would be the what what do you think would be the benefit if you were funded more? that would be uh, beneficial to the town. So the goal of this is, as we just mentioned, the, um, when we put the full budget together, we ha you have the data, you have, the, you have the, those numbers, and you'll always have those numbers. This is to basically wrap those numbers into a, uh, a paragraph that explains the budget and explains it's the, what, what... Explain, if you so go back to what I originally said, you know, it's the 80-20 rule. Uh, probably 80% of the money is spent on 20% of the projects. Uh, so those are the ones that move the town along, and those are the ones that people who live here um, feel that are really good services for the, for the town and the town benefits by. So what I'm trying to do is get a, a feeling for those particular projects that support the goals uh, of the department as they're written here and have somebody tell me that while they're actually making the presentation and how the numbers they're presenting that day match up with the initiatives that support the achievement of goals. I mean, they've already done it. Uh, so I couldn't imagine if they've already done it, they put the numbers oh, yeah. into I mean, the it's, it's not difficult. I just didn't know if you wanted them to present the, the, the numbers in a different format than no. they, oh. no. uh, Other than where I'm asking for a number on this sheet, which is uh, where we get, this is stuff they already have, operating budget, capital right. budget, enterprise fund budgets. Uh, three years prior to the uh, actual budget, uh, current year budget, estimated current uh, year actual variance by dollar. They're already doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I just want it as it hooks up to a goal, with, uh, and not even all the initiatives. 80-20 again. Uh, give me the most important ones, and are you being effective spending the town's money and the town getting a benefit from it? 
And then if, you're, if for some reason we're not spending enough money but there's a huge benefit, then maybe we have to consider funding. Mm -hmm. Or conversely, if you've got a program that doesn't seem to be doing anything, maybe you could put the money someplace else. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm trying to do with the net objective of being able to give a better recommendation uh, for a town meeting. Do you want to run through this quick? I mean, we yeah, if you want to. I mean, do you want me to just read through it and then? Uh, yeah, nothing has been changed since the well, the last time you we did the tweaks, it. right? So this is the most current version that yeah, we had. Yeah, and last you know, year. this is the first time out, and so maybe we could get a sample one and go through it and say this is right, this is wrong, or everybody. That'd be a good idea. Yeah, I mean, we can do that. We can do that right here. I can make any changes because we're, we're going to be prepared to send this to the to the like yeah. I said, the January eighth meeting. We don't want to wait. So you want me to go through it, and then, yeah, we, and then you guys can it. stop me if you, if you what, what do you mean by yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, we can make changes. Okay, so, uh, so the, it's by department, so let's, the one I do the most work with is DPW. Um, and so it would be a written explanation of last year's budget versus actual year-to-date when they come in, and estimated <clears throat> spend till the end of the year highlighting variances and how they were, they were or are being addressed. So in other words, if they're down in some areas, up in some areas, why is that? Or were, uh, and this is, uh, this is this was last year's budget. Including this section, accomplishments, significant budget items, and trends. So again, what we're looking for here is issue, you know, so that, you know, we see a trend perhaps that it's going up, and it's going up because of inflation and the supplies that we have to buy from uh, outside. And we, we would expect that uh, for this year's budget coming up, because of those factors, it's going to impact what our budget is when we submit it for a particular line item. So that, that brings us into uh, <clears throat> New Year. Uh, new. So for instance, uh, just to, to go back, uh, we took a tour of the sewage treatment plant. And uh, one of the things was, uh, I don't know if this is exactly germane to this, but uh, the guy who gave us the thing, they, they had to buy purification bulbs or bulbs that, that cost bulbs. an outrageous amount of money. Yeah. And there was only one supplier and they couldn't get it from Canada anymore. Right. Yes. Therefore, they had to pay the, through the nose for the full thing. So it impacted the budget. To me, that would be a good thing to know. And that's why the budget went up by, I don't know, $500,000 yeah. or whatever it was for that sort of um, expenditure. So then for the new year's budget, uh, a written summary of any new events or possible contingencies covered in this year's budget <clears throat> that were not in last year's budget, um, statement um, on whether or uh, any of last year's budget variances will continue into the new year's uh, budget, which is what I just covered, best estimates and areas of how the new budget year will compare to last year's. So it would be some kind of statement of the trend is for the bulbs, for instance. It's going to cost us a lot more money. Um, and then under the, uh, each department has goals. And then under each of those goals, uh, not every one of them, but uh, the major ones uh, along the 80-20 rule, is uh, just a synopsis of like the uh, town does a lot of, um, uh, DPW does a lot of um, water, uh, uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, I want to say water treatment or water clar not clarification. Treatment, water treatment. Uh, not, uh, purification? Pu purification. Oh. Or they, you know, they clean out the storm drains and they, whatever. And all that has a cost. Uh, and so what I'd like to know is, like, if they can group those for the major costs, like water. That's storm water management? Storm water management. Yes. Yeah. Well, not storm water. But the, the whole process of uh, cleaning up the wastewater waste treatment. Wa wastewater treatment or whatever. Are you talking wastewater or stormwater or uh, well, I'm, I'm getting water, water or but drinking all, water? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm just talking the main, so a goal may be for them uh, to clean up, uh, they do a lot of activities that, that clean up uh, the nitrogen that goes into uh, the bay by cleaning the drains, race, whatever the right words are. Okay. So that's a major thing that they spend a lot of time on. Uh, so therefore, one of their goals has got to be something to do with the right words to talk about cleaning up water going into the bay. And if I might interrupt yeah, briefly, please. I know you love metrics, so mm -hmm. I would like a goal like that to be a measurable goal, not just clean mm -hmm. up the 
you know, there's got to be some kind of number attached yeah, to it. I, mean, this, I don't the, care if it's number of households or... Yeah, D DPW is a great example. Um, they, last year, they did the water treatment, the drinking water system mm -hmm. study, and I think they came up with goals and capital projects right. for the next okay. mm -hmm. 20 years. Yeah. Now, they're just contracting to do a wastewater treatment study right now, so they'll have that within this year. So that with goals, with a capital plan, and, with infrastructure plans right. for the future. So am I am I sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 no. So you're along so, those lines. So yes, they are. So uh, what I'm know, saying is so in examples. that case I'd like to know that that's a goal that they have. They're gonna be doing the water treatment study and it's gonna cost so much money right. and it's gonna and what we I mean, because you do market research or you do research and you know roughly what what you're gonna get back before you even do well, it. Well I'm saying that when the the studies will be done Probably, well, they won't get the, the wastewater infrastructure study done by June to, for this budget cycle. But they'll be able to say, So they okay. can do that. But the water, the drinking water one is done, and, and they, you can see they have a capital plan that goes out over so what I years. Yeah, so what I'd like to see on that is say, okay, it's been done, and now as a result of that, we're anticipating over the next 10 years, roughly, that you've got to spend this much uh, to implement what was on that um, what was the results of the uh, study. And you could even do it for the ones that aren't done in terms of anticipating what the problems might be and what they might mean and what the possible remediation uh, activities would be. And when you added up the water and the sewer treatment, that would be X number of dollars of the total budget for DPW, and that would maybe be the 80-20 rule at play right there. Or well, what you could do, I think you're alluding to it anyway, to Sean's point, say something was carried out 10 years. On a yearly basis, you could say, okay, what you plan, say for year number one, what were your actuals? Year number two, what was your plan? What were your actuals? Yeah. And that would be a better traceability than just throwing something off for 50 years. You want something that's right. done systematically, you know, to right. audit. Right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we, we, we do do that. So it's really just presenting it. It's rehash. I'm sure you do that because I'm sure you, uh, we've had this discussion before, before you guys even come here you've got a lot of this stuff co almost completely done anyhow and how you'd like to see it play out. So some, of, all, some of what they're talking about will be in the capital budget process, but one of the things I think about, for example, because I'm kind of stuck on the report from DPW at the town meeting last year, it would be great to hear what percentage of the town roads were repaired, updated, right. sidewalk. Where, you know, is, is it a half, is it a quarter, or maybe the specifics, the number of them. Those are the kinds of things that I think it would be helpful to tell town meeting to know that, oh yeah, they are tracking. I remember going to Tim's office when we did some um, uh, visits a few years ago, I think it was before mm. COVID for sure, and he had a chart up on the wall that he had a specific organization about this is what we, when we do this, this is, so mm. that's the kind of report I think that when you tell people this is what we're spending the money on, it's, it translates into something. Yeah. Mm. So know, I'm just going to make this up. So for instance, I know, the, uh, I know they spend roughly a million dollars on road repair or whatever the whole category is. Mm -hmm. So for me, it would be great if somebody could say to me, the DPW is responsible for uh, 152 miles of roads in town. Uh, it costs us a million dollars mm -hmm. to uh, maintain, upgrade, extend, whatever we have to do uh, to maintain those roads. And this year, going into the budget, uh, because of the increases in oil and all the other stuff, it's going to cost us a lot more money, and these are the reasons. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that, I mean, I agree. And then, you know, Terry, I think you've kind of alluded to it. They have a, a pavement management program that they use. Right. That mm -hmm. they, they annually grade all the roads in town. That's how they decide which ones are going to be repaired and in what form or fashion. They can generate a report on that very easily to so say, when, this so is, these are the roads. So when somebody says, what are you going to spend that million dollars on, instead of saying that's what we ask for every year, they could say, well, you know, last year we have we did this, this is the year. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. I, I mean, they should just be better about it. He does, they do try to do that, and they list the roads that they've worked yeah. on and the ones they've completed, but I think, you know, it'd be nice. I think they can present it in any form or fashion, but you want to see, like, a long-term plan. What roads are you going to work on? What percentage of the roads are you repairing? Yeah, I don't year? even care what roads specifically. I just want to know that there's a requirement to maintain 152 miles of road, and it costs us this much a year, and uh, everyone agrees that it's a good idea to have good roads in town, 
uh, uh, but because of the increases in the materials, yeah. it's, we're going to have to raise the budget, and we haven't got enough money, or whatever the property. Mm -hmm. property I can tell you, it's, it's not, you won't you won't you, you won't read that report optimistically. You're going to say, well, we, there's never enough money to repair the roads. <laughs> yeah, but to be you repaired, know, but for me, I think it, they're it, pretty efficient. But I, but I get what you're saying. Well, yeah, but, but for me, I would have no problem with somebody saying to me, you know, if everybody likes 152 miles of road they can drive on without blowing out their tires, then perhaps. It's a good idea to spend an extra uh, $250,000 on materials to ensure that we get that, or whatever it yeah, might be. Yeah, it's a very low number, Brian. <laughs> I think but, some, of, some of that information, as Terry already alluded to, should be perhaps in our cover letter as well, yeah. Yeah. because that's great information that the town meeting members can sink their teeth into and really understand know what that these people for. are working hard, yeah. and this is what it costs. Uh, I can tell you, yeah. we've, we've been working with DPW on a lot of the studies that have been mm -hmm. done. Now, they're doing a, a rate study as well. So. Um, to pull this data together so that you know we can a, an, analyze it, but also present it in a fashion that you know is, that the public mm -hmm. can see. Because the, there's, all, I mean, anybody that took the tour of the wastewater treatment plant saw that a lot of work gets done there. Mm -hmm. There's, it's a very complicated system. Yes. Uh, same with the water system. So they're doing quite a bit, and yeah, it's really kind of just getting the word out more. That's the key, though, is, is putting it in words that that uh, you know an average person could understand. Mm -hmm. That yeah. makes sense. It's a, in a way, it's a defense of the budget, but it's a way for people to feel like, oh yeah, the town is doing something. Mm. And, you know? and the eighty twenty rule is, I'm, I'm, I vaguely remember maybe six million dollars a year is the DPW budget. I don't know what it is exactly, but there's a million dollars of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's probably two or three other projects that they spend similar amounts on, and that would cover the major projects. Mm. And maybe when the memo was put together, we go back to these sheets, pull up all the important exactly. data. It's a nice cover letter for the town meeting members. Run through. You could even, if you, well, I mean, depending on what this looks like, when you finish, you could hand it out to town meeting members, too. Mm -hmm. And then they, you, they would exactly know what they're getting. So uh, the rest of it is show by line item three. It's just that uh, you already have this data. It's just a matter of laying it out a little differently on a spreadsheet. And then uh, a couple of years ago, we were talking about organization and some of the uh, strains that are put on trying to find people. Uh, and I guess it's still, uh, DPW still has issues on trying to find people that will work for what we have in the budget. For, um, so maybe it's about time we confront, <laughs> well, at the same time, yeah, we are. confront. Mm -hmm. Great well, question. but I mean, but somebody has to, I mean, uh, we, I mean, has, we have uh, the long-term capital committee is looking at kind no, of I understand things that, even but, beyond but capital. But ultimately it has to go back to folks in town and they have to decide we talk about whether this, they uh, want presentation to. the other night and with the school teachers, but that is town-wide. And yes, I agree. Recruitment and retainment, mm -hmm. uh, it's a competitive market right now in all communities. And, you know, we, you've got to be competitive with your comparable communities, but the town needs to decide what you're saying. What, well, what do they want? But also they have to get the word out and, and to have people at town meeting to understand that if you can't hire X number of snowplow drivers... Uh, because you're not paying enough money to do that or contractors or whatever, then you're going to have a lot of snow on the roads. And if you want to live with that, then vote this down. If you don't want to live on it, then make the money available. It's up to them. <laughs> Us, I should say. <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing behind this. And, you know, if we can't do it 100 percent, do it 80 percent. I'll be happy with that. Yeah, I think it's a good it's a good template to use to get them at least thinking about a standardized format, mm -hmm. and um, we'll I will we can we'll talk to them more about it at the department head meeting. But as we go through the budget initially, we should uh, I'll sit down with them and and go through it with them. Now um, I can't guarantee it'll be 100 percent the first time around, but at least it'll get them thinking about what. Would it be and then, and then we can tweak it as we talk yeah, about. Yeah, we, I mean, we But it. I would like it. I mean, this is not that difficult. I would like it to be 80, 90 percent there when you mm. come back. Yeah, I mean, we, we can just to try it out. do that. Yeah. So would it behoove us just to say take a department and just try it out with a form? I think it's up to him. I, I mean, I'm, I'm already just throwing that up, Brian. Is oh, okay. a suggestion to him. I'm yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, I think if we're going to roll it out, we we want to get as much buy-in to this as we can. So if if I mean, if we get the majority of departments to do it and we see that there's maybe deficiency here and there and that the data is not coming back, maybe we tweak that for next year. And then I well, think that's... Well, I, I would be, you know, I, for the three years that I, I've looked for this kind of stuff, uh, I produced a spreadsheet for myself, for my own use, that corresponded to your instructions, uh, fiscal year operating instructions, just to see by checking off who actually fulfilled the, the 
it was not good. Um, so not everybody did what you guys asked them to do. Just saying, so I would like to see them try to do this. Yeah, I mean, I, we can send this out with, the, with like I said, with the, um, the memo, in co in coordination with the memo that we send out. Um, but we still need the guidance from the, I think we should wait on the memo at least to the 8th so we know where we're, we're going. Didn't but I the budgets. The, didn't I see the operating memo? <laughs> yeah, the budget is still, the budget is still, we're still moving along with the budget, as I mentioned in the beginning. So this is the generic budget memo that we send out right. every year. And um, with the guidance that we give them, and then the second piece of this is capital that we talk about. Um, but the piece that I, you know, I left here was right. potentially a B budget. We don't, we mm -hmm. don't know what that looks like yet. So, um, but we've told the departments that, uh, like DPW, as I mentioned, he's pretty much got his capital, uh, working on his capital. So they're not waiting for us to say, start the budget process, which is good because we're in December. So we want to start meeting with them sooner than later. I think that's the other thing to remember is we're asking them to do two budgets this year. Given yes. The financial circumstances. But, yes. but uh, listen, every, every year everybody does a couple of budgets in their mind before they put down the, uh, <laughs> the one that actually goes forward. Mm. So, I mean, I don't think asking them to look at an A budget and a B budget is too difficult. No, it's not done all the time. We did it prior to, I mean, we did it through COVID, I think. Yeah, we it was did a budget. When COVID hit, we did two budgets, yeah. And if they're, well, I won't say it, but they probably do that already, trying to figure out how much they can go to the town with to uh, support uh, having it, their particular budget that mm. they put in. So. so I don't think the committee needs to take a vote on sending out the memo. I mean, not the memo, the... Uh, I think it's just extra guidance to the departments. So, absolutely. We're not telling you what to do, Gary. No. We're just heavily <laughs> suggesting. We're just, I'm just pleading for the third time. So we're telling you what to do. It, it looks something like what I yeah. just suggestions. I should say what Beppy uh, and Terry and I put together. It's like when your parents say, it's your decision. Yeah. This is your decision. Well, it really is. <laughs> God help you if you don't do the right yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess we'll see when they start uh, submitting yeah. the back and we'll you get a sense of how they're if I'm smiling, handling it. <laughs> but all right. That's all I got to say. So, I'm sorry, when are you sending out that? Uh, well, not till after the, oh, eight, not the, till after the, the joint eight. meeting on the 8th. The committee needs to decide you know, what option they want to pursue to kind of bridge the school budget gap. Um, mm -hmm. So. Hmm. So, uh, this is not the right, I'll ask you later, this is not the right place to answer, ask the question. Okay. Okay. About that particular subject. Oh, I have to leave in a few minutes, so. Oh, okay, good, good, lucky, lucky for you. <laughs> you depending email me. on what avenue you pursue, the conversation <laughs> could go much longer. Uh, yes. But we'll keep it at that. So, it's just a quick question, I'll give it a quick question. So, there's no... Um, discussion between now and January 8th on the avenue we're pursuing? Um, you know, not um, a formal discussion. You know, the long-term capital planning committee will meet, but it's really a decision that the, the school committee and the select board need to make on the budget and, you know, what avenue they want to pursue. Um, and then we'll move forward. We're just, you know, I'm you start stating the facts and this mm -hmm. is where we're at. Here's the options that people think and you know, some are viable, more, more viable than others and what do you want to do? Um, so, you know, hopefully they make a decision on the 8th. I mean, it's, you know, depending on what they want to pursue. Um, it could be a consolidated schedule which would, you know, need a lot of outreach uh, to go along with it. So, and, and then otherwise, and even with budget cuts, there's a lot of analysis that needs to go into that to, you know, you, if you have to cut budget and staff, you still want to maintain as many services and programs as possible. So there's a lot of, uh, that goes along with that. Oh. So. And the subcommittee that's, I know it's Terry, you and Bill, yeah. when you're meeting the 18th? Uh, we're going to have a meet, you know, the 19th we meet with a school committee. Okay. And then we're having our own subcommittee meeting tomorrow at 1 o'clock at Southworth Library. It's, it's actually not a subcommittee. I just want to, it, it's liaisons. It's just the number of liaisons have been increased. So it's not really a subcommittee. We don't have authority at all over their budget. This is just, you know, we're liaisons to the school department. No, understood. 
I was just thinking of it because of yeah. um, conversations that have been because going on four of us, offline like about uh, <laughs> questions and stuff to say to that uh, to the school committee meeting. That's, a, that's what I think. Believe the purpose of Friday's meeting is just to start to formulate something for the Tuesday meeting. Okay, because I just my said, understanding. I haven't. Um, I started to put things together, but I haven't sent it out yet. Okay, because I have questions. Um, all right, are we done with that conversation? Yes. Liaison updates, anybody? Uh, I don't have one from DBW. They're having their monthly meeting tomorrow, which I'll attend. Oh, sorry, next week. Not this one. Not tomorrow. Bill, no? Anybody? No, I, 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 I met with them before. I watched the meeting, uh, but there was nothing. Okay. Nothing more See ya. Good night. Okay. So the, the, this the list that was on the um, the board they, they have put up on the board here. This is the most current list. I, mean, I think I don't think there was any other uh, members to get back to us to. Um, I know Bep. So. No, I think that's it. I don't think anything's changed since that list. All right. Okay. Everybody agree? Yes. Yep. I don't know how often some of these. The only report from the school department is what you all you were all were there on Monday, and you know what the situation is. I, I, you know, I said it Monday night, but the school, the school department has pushed very hard to get a budget in faster than they ever have. Yes, I before. applaud them. A lot of effort went into um, pulling those numbers. Yep. Okay. Minutes for approval. Somebody want to make a motion? Well, I have to, with respect to the meeting minutes, I just want to clarify something. Well, I think it's the last page. It was my meeting with the council on aging. I don't want to give the wrong interpretation. This is uh, page Can we five. Make a motion to uh, at least discuss it. Okay. <laughs> motion, motion to discuss. Anyone second? I second it. Okay. All right, Bill, you're on. And now I can start. Okay. <laughs> Be section C on page five. Okay. It says Mr. Bowles report that the COA director was planning to forego budget preparations until February the 20, 2024. That was foregoing the preparations to sit with me, but she's still doing her preparations for her own budget, okay? She's, she just hasn't had a time to set a date to sit with me to, to let me review the product of these uh, deliberations and their preparations. So I just want to make that perfectly clear. She's not that's, foregoing budget preparations. Right. The way that's worded sounds like she's not going to do anything about exactly. the budget until February 2024. Yeah, exactly right. I just want to clarify that. Okay. Do we need to make an official change in that before we vote on these minutes? Well, I'm not sure if you can change minutes. I think that you, you make a recommendation to, um, to correct you can, them. You can amend them. You can amend them, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, can we amend and it, then vote? Yeah. If okay. you want, is that, Bill, you want to make that So I would like to make a, a motion to amend Section C to state that the, the Mr. Bowles report that the COA director was planning to forgo budget preparations with me until February 2024. Somebody want to second that? I'll second that. Okay, thank you, Brian. Is that the only change? Anybody else? All in favor of approving? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So Bill made the made the motion to who made I the who I made, made who I seconded made the motion to amend. Yes. Brian seconded. Brian seconded. Yes. yes. And we all voted for it. Yes. Uh, just a question: What does our meeting schedule look like? Are we not meeting until January eighth? So I would suggest that we're gonna I'm gonna send a note to Capital just to talk about Capital for a second. I'm gonna send a note to Capital. I'd like to meet with at least the group to begin the calendar for them at the beginning of the year because we kind of know what we have in free cash and what can be spent. Um, for our meetings, uh, I would like to start meeting right after the meeting um, on January 8th. We can, to, to meet between now and then might be, I mean, we're putting the budget together as I, as I mentioned. I don't know if any discussion would, would be relevant right now to have on the smaller budgets, but. I, I'm available if you want to talk about the form 
interpretation, perhaps. My goal is on January 9th, uh, the memo goes gets circulated along with the form. Oh, okay. So we so we get so we get that going, and uh, we'll have a department head meeting uh, to go over the form again with them, okay. and then I can start scheduling smaller departments in my office as I did last year, and then I feel that the week of January. January 8th will be the the uh, meeting. Um, so are you suggesting the 11th? Or are you suggesting literally after the meeting on the 8th? Well, I would say that <laughs> little, uh, say I would say either the 11th or the 18th, we can start meeting um, uh, with, uh, with the department. Are you going to have anything back on the 11th if you meet with them on the 8th? Yeah, I would say that probably the 18th. So we, I would suggest that we, we, we schedule a meeting for the 18th. Yep. Um, and then we can talk about like how much we've gotten in and, and, and things like that so that we at least have some, a game plan for. And at that time, talk about a calendar going forward okay. and what departments we want to have in just so that I can give the departments guidance to say, okay, this is when we plan on meeting. Okay. Four o'clock? Four, time would be four o'clock as yeah. usual? Yes. One eighteen twenty four. I know. <laughs> 6.30, be like past my bedtime soon. So that's it, not till the 18th. Capital, we can, um, I would like to also schedule for the week of the 8th some time just to have, uh, get a calendar going with that. The 8th is the joint meeting. Are we meeting jointly on the 8th? Yes. That's the select board. It can't be there. Mm. Be, I, that's the joint meeting on the state. select board on the 8th. That's okay. Understood. Yeah. Mm. They want a second meeting on the 8th, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, one eight one eight six thirty. 630. Yeah. Uh, that would be the school budget? Or what? Well, they're going to. that's where the decision will be made to the path going forward well, and for guidance, whether they want to pursue an override. The right. wants to yeah. pursue what they want to do. Right. So then that's at 630. Okay. Right. On the 8th. So I'll post our meeting for the 8th. Uh, at 6.30, yeah, and then there. the 18th With the, uh, at 4 o'clock. Our, our own meeting. Yeah. Anything else for discussion? Would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I would like to make that. I seconded. Yeah. And yes. seconded by Terry Ham. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.